Okay, good day. This is Joe Van Cleve, and uh, we're out on the road today, and I wanted to tell you about a little trip that I did yesterday. Um, my intention was to drive into western New Mexico and visit the El Moro National Monument, which includes the Inscription Rock, and I thought it would be a great destination to do pinhole photography with Harmon Direct Positive Paper. And so I headed out west on I-40 to Grants and ended up taking the wrong highway in Grants, out of Grants, and instead of ending up in El Moro National Monument, I went past the El Malpais National Monument and down toward Cuamato and Pie Town. And then eventually knowing that I missed my intended destination, I headed east on Highway 60 and toward Socorro, and on the way I realized that I would be passing by the VLA, the Very Large Array Radio Telescope in western New Mexico. And so we stopped there and uh, had a, uh, a good session of pinhole photography in a kind of a breezy afternoon condition, which it typically is out there on the plains. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about what I did and how it worked out for me. So the first thing is that I'm using a wooden box camera, 4x5 format wooden box camera with sheet film holders. And the box camera does not have any viewfinder like you would, you would have on a large format camera. But it has these viewing dots along the side of the camera and the top of the camera to help you line up the edge of the picture. And I've been using this viewing dot system for quite a while now and it worked out really good for me as I'll show you later on in this video with the resulting pictures I got. They were very well composed just as I had thought they would be. Um, and the whole secret is knowing where the edge of the picture is and how close you want things to be there. Um, I also use my standard uh, exposure method with Harman Direct Positive Paper, which is to rate the paper at an ISO of about 8. I use my Gauss and Luna Pro F meter. I meter the scene. I find the exposure time for F128 on the meter and then multiply that by the X factor that converts the, ISO, that converts the exposure for the F number of the camera itself. And, uh, it worked out really good. The exposure times ended up being about 30 seconds each um, with uh, the Harman paper in that kind of a partly cloudy uh, sky condition. And it was, uh, it was, the results were very good. I developed the first two prints in my Jobo drum using the 1 plus 10 dilution of Ilford multi-grade paper. For the second two prints, I used the same used developer from the first, and I added five more milliliters of fresh developer as kind of a, uh, of a makeup solution, a re regenerator, if you will. And all four prints came out fine. So that's another little trick is to use a replenishment on your developer if you don't want to waste too much of it. So let me show you the close-ups now of how I composed my... Uh, uh, scene using the viewing dots on the camera. Well, this isn't the VLA. This is Northeast Albuquerque, but I want to come out here today and just show you a little bit more detail how I'm using this pinhole box camera that doesn't have a real viewfinder, but I'm using these viewing dots anyways, and I'm able to get pretty good compositions. So let's go take a closer look. Now suppose I was going to take a picture of the Sandia Mountains and I want to frame up my subject. This is how I would go about framing up the image. Now for framing up the left edge of the field of view of the image, I want to line up the right viewing dot with the front pinhole dot. And I want that line to correspond to the part of the scene that I want at the very left side of the image. and that in this case is where the mountain rounds down. Similar to what we did with the left side, for framing up the right side of the image I'm going to line up the left viewing dot with the front pinhole dot 
to correspond to the part of the scene where I want the very right edge of the image to be and that is in the distance there where the mountain is. Now here's a view of the right side of the camera showing the vertical viewing dots and there are two sets of dots. The pinhole is right there in the front where that plate is and you have two sets of lines that converge onto the pinhole dot in the front and those are used for view, lining up your vertical angle of view. Okay, for determining the bottom edge of your image, I'm going to line up the top uh, viewing dot on the side with the front viewing dot, and that's going to define where the bottom edge is. In this case, it's going to be the foreground in front of the camera. And I'm going to pan the camera up here, and you can see the larger context of where that fits in with the image. Now let's see how we're going to determine the top of the image. I'm going to crouch down below the camera and I'm going to view from the bottom viewing dot up to the pinhole dot on front and that line is going to tell me where the top edge of the picture is and that's how you determine that. Now keep in mind that I also have a set of vertical viewing dots on both sides of the camera and it's a good idea to check both sides to make sure that you're getting the top and bottom that you want to. Well, I had a very enjoyable time yesterday shooting the uh, pinhole photography out at the Very Large Array Telescope, even though it was kind of an unplanned destination. But the most important thing about that trip was having this box camera with just these viewing dots. Um, it really does work well as a composing device. You don't really need a view screen at all or a viewfinder of a, like a regular camera would have. And so uh, I encourage you to employ a device like this in your next pinhole camera. So let's go take a look at some of those images that I created yesterday on Harman Direct Positive Paper. And you have yourself a good day.